So what I'd like everyone to now do is take out the fifth and final copy of this particular diagram as we summarize everything that we've diagrammed so far. So we're going to be looking at the somatic sensory, the somatic motor, and the visceral motor, one component of which goes to skin. So let's begin with somatic sensory. So we know that somatic sensory is input, is afferent, and these are coming from skin, skeletal muscle, and joints. So let's say someone pokes you on the anterior part of your body or the lateral part of your body. You're feeling that because of these somatic sensory neurons. So once again, we're considering the anterior part or the lateral part of your body. Someone's poked your skin. So I'm drawing a unipolar neuron and the dendrites are the sensory receptors that we find in the skin, skeletal muscle and joints, but we're considering the skin. All right, so let's trace the direction of the action potential. So I hope everyone agrees it's going in this direction. Why this direction? Because this is sensory after all, this is input, okay? So where is it heading to? The central nervous system, the spinal cord. So let's say someone now pokes you at your back. So anywhere posteriorly, okay? So we're once again going to draw a somatic sensory neuron, but this time it's coming from the back, okay? So unipolar neuron again, and the direction of the action potential is input going in this direction, traveling afferently, because after all, it is sensory, okay? Now, let's consider number two, somatic motor. So somatic motor, that's somatic nervous system. So your somatic motor neurons are part of the somatic nervous system. Don't forget, effectors, skeletal muscle. And of course, one somatic motor neuron. So where do we find the cell body? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to find the cell body at the anterior gray horn. So the long axon leaves the ventral root, and let's say it's going to skeletal muscle that we find anteriorly or laterally. So of course, it's going to leave through the ventral ramus. So let's now trace the direction of the action potential that's going to travel through this type A fiber, somatic motor neuron, of course. So it's just going to go this way, right? Leaves through the ventral root. Out it goes through the ventral ramus. All right. What about skeletal muscle of the back or anywhere found posteriorly? So let's go ahead and draw your somatic motor neuron. Cell bodies found in the anterior gray horn. Axon leaves through the ventral root. This time, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to skeletal muscles that we find at the back. So once again, let's trace the direction of the action potential. It is motor. It is efferent. All right, so it's going this way, going to skeletal muscle. All right, the last part is the ANS, the autonomic nervous system. Remember, we have two visceral motor neurons, the preganglionic neurons and the postganglionic neurons. One component will be going to the skin. So the effectors are structures of the skin. There's more to this that we're going to discuss in the next chapter. So where are we going to draw the cell body of your preganglionic neuron? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to draw that at the lateral gray horn. So the cell body of your preganglionic neuron are clustered at the lateral gray horn, which of course is only found between T1 to L2. So the axon leaves through the ventral root, enters the white ramus, whereby it's going to synapse with the postganglionic neuron. And the synapsing will happen at the sympathetic chain ganglion, which we can also say sympathetic trunk ganglion. So here's the cell body of your postganglionic neuron. Axons leave through the gray ramus. So let's consider going to skin found anteriorly or laterally. So 
This is going to structures that we find anteriorly or laterally. So let's now trace the direction of the action potential. This is motor, so it's going this way. Okay, out the ventral root into the white ramus, always the white ramus. Now it's going to synapse with your postganglionic neuron. And therefore, the action potential will lead, travel through the postganglionic neuron's axon as it makes its way to structures associated with the skin. Now, before we completely wrap this up, let's look at the dorsal root. Okay, so we're going to highlight the dorsal root. So I hope everyone can see, as far as the dorsal root is concerned, it is one way as far as the direction of the action potential. And what is that direction? It is going towards the spinal cord. It is incoming. It is input. So as far as the dorsal root is concerned, it is sensory. So let's now consider the ventral root. So if you look carefully, there is only one direction in which these action potentials are traveling, regardless of the type of motor neurons, whether it's somatic or whether it's visceral, one direction only. So I hope everyone agrees that that direction is out, okay? So your ventral root is motor. Now, what about the spinal nerve, okay? What can we say about the spinal nerve? I hope everyone can see based on these directions of these arrows. As far as the spinal nerve is concerned, it is mixed. Why is it mixed? Because it's containing both sensory and motor. All right, what about the ventral ramus? What about the dorsal ramus? Can we say they're mixed as well? Yes. So they both have sensory and motor. Action potentials going in two different directions, depending upon if you're looking at a sensory neuron or if you're looking at a motor neuron. Now, what about the white ramus? As far as the white ramus is concerned, this is only one direction towards the sympathetic chain ganglion because it's got a synapse with a postganglionic neuron. Now, what about the gray ramus. Well, the gray ramus is only going in one direction too, out. All right, so in through the white ramus and out through the gray ramus and eventually making its way either through the dorsal or the ventral rami, depending upon what region of the body the skin is located. So this is a transverse section of one of the lumbar spinal cord segment. So right over here is our posterior or dorsal root. And of course, along the length is the dorsal or posterior root ganglion. And anterior to this is your anterior or ventral root. And if you look carefully, we have the cell body of your sensory neuron that is clustered in this dorsal root ganglion. So as was said in the previous slide, information is coming through the posterior or dorsal side of the spinal cord through the dorsal root. And motor information is leaving the spinal cord through the ventral or anterior root. Furthermore, take note of the cell body of your somatic motor neuron. That's clustered in the anterior gray horn. Well, if you look at the cell body of the autonomic or visceral motor neuron, they're clustered at the lateral gray horn. So because of the fact that we have a lateral gray horn, I hope everyone's clear that this has to be lumbar spinal cord segment L1 or L2. It cannot be anything inferior to L2 because the lateral gray horn is only found once again between spinal cord segments T1 to L2. So what I'd like to now do is apply the diagramming that we've done onto these two images that is part of this slide. So let's look at your somatic sensory. So we know that the somatic sensory or somatic afferent is information coming from skin, skeletal muscle, and joints. So let's say someone pokes you on your back. 
Okay, we're feeling that because of the somatic sensory neurons. So we'll begin by illustrating these receptors, which again are the dendrites that are embedded in the skin. And then the axon comes in through the dorsal side, or I should say the dorsal ramus. Why? Because this is coming from your backside. And then it continues into the spinal cord and the cell bodies of the somatic sensory neurons are clustered in this dorsal root ganglion. Then the axon continues through the dorsal root and eventually into the spinal cord. Now, if it's, let's say, skin from anterior and lateral regions of your body, then it's gonna come through the anterior or ventral ramus. So let's illustrate that on the bottom image. And let's say again, someone pokes you this time on the anterior or lateral side. So you're feeling that because of your somatic sensory, neurons and cell bodies are clustered in the dorsal root ganglion, then it comes in through the dorsal root and then will enter the spinal cord. So once again, this is information coming from anterior or lateral regions of your body. Take note once again that the information sensory is coming from the dorsal side. All right, let's now look at somatic motor. So this is going to skeletal muscle. So let's stick to the skeletal muscles of your back. So the cell body is located in the anterior gray horn. The axon leaves through the ventral root and eventually leaves through this dorsal ramus. Why? Because ladies and gentlemen, this is going to muscles of the back. So if we were to trace the direction of action potential, it's gonna go in this direction. Incidentally, if we were to trace the somatic sensory from skin, then it's going to be going in this direction, just so that we're clear. All right, well, what if it's going to, let's say, muscles of your anterior and lateral regions of your body? Skeletal muscle, of course. So we'll look at the picture down below, and we'll draw the cell body of those somatic motor neurons. Don't forget, this belongs to the somatic nervous system. So the axon leaves through the ventral root, because this is motor, and eventually will leave through the ventral ramus. So once again, this is going to skeletal muscles found anteriorly or laterally. All right, let's now consider the last scenario that we looked at, and that is visceral motor. And of course, these visceral motor neurons, we have two of them, belong to the autonomic nervous system. So we're looking at one component, specifically going to skin. So the effectors are structures of the skin. So where would we find the cell body of the preganglionic neuron? So I hope this makes sense in that we should find it, ladies and gentlemen, in the lateral gray horn. So what I'm illustrating right now is a cell body found at the lateral gray horn. That's where they're located. All right, so then the axon leaves through the ventral root. This is motor, right? Output or motor leaves through the ventral root and then eventually enters the white ramus, okay? Whereby it's going to synapse, and I'll draw an arrow just to be clear as far as the direction of the action potential. It's going away from the spinal cord. This is motor after all. All right, so from there, it's now going to synapse with another neuron. What is that neuron? Well, that's your postganglionic neuron, and that synapse occurs at the sympathetic chain ganglion, which we can also say sympathetic trunk ganglion. So here is the cell body of your postganglionic neuron clustered at the sympathetic chain ganglion or sympathetic trunk ganglion out the axon leaves through the gray ramus and let's say it's going to the skin on your back. Well, where is it going? It's gonna leave through the dorsal ramus. And where is it going to? Well, it's going to the skin, structures of the skin. So if we were to draw an arrow, we would be drawing it in this direction, right? This is output. Well, what if it's now going to skin located anteriorly or laterally? We'll draw the cell body of the preganglionic neuron located at the lateral gray horn while its axons 
leaves the ventral root, don't forget this is motor, enters the white ramus, okay, enters the white ramus, and what is it gonna do? It's gonna synapse with the postganglionic neuron. From there, it leaves through the gray ramus, and since we're talking about the anterior or lateral regions of our body where we have the skin, then it's gonna leave through the ventral ramus. And once again, the arrow should be going this way because this is motor. So what we've done is just reviewed the diagramming that we did previously. So I'm hoping that with all this diagramming, things are making more sense.